Now, before we start this video, I have to come clean. I've never shot film before. Say I'm not a real photographer because I've never shot film. I don't care. All right, that's just something I had to get off my chest before I start this video. Now, that's not to say I would never shoot film. I do actually own a film camera. This is a Minolta point and shoot that I got from my grandma. It's in perfect condition and in the box, it still has the original receipt from when it was purchased from Kmart in 1993. I haven't even started the video and I'm already getting off topic. But something that has always surprised me is when people tell me my photos look like film or they assume I did shoot on film and ask what film stock I'm using. Now, my editing style has changed a lot over the past eight years. And I guess in recent years, it has gravitated toward more of a film-like look. For my photos, I like to have a punchy yet soft look that is kind of stylized. Some people like very subtle edits. Personally, I don't. When people see my photos, I want them to know that they are my photos, from a combination of the way I edit, but more importantly to my framing and compositions. Now the way you shoot is completely up to you, but the one way I can help you is when it comes down to editing. Now for all of the photos that I am editing, I will be using my Essential Editing Preset Pack. Now for the tips I will be giving you guys today, it is not required, but if you enjoy what you see, feel free to head over to my website and check out the preset pack. It helps support the channel. Now for me, one of the most noticeable things about film that separates it from digital is the way highlights and shadows work. In film, there is no such thing as pure white or pure black. The easiest way to achieve this is to go down to your tone curve and drag down the highlights and drag up the shadows. You will notice that when you go to your histogram, you cannot drag all the way to the right. You will see there is a hard stop for the whites and for the blacks. Try and drag it all the way and there is a hard stop for the blacks as well. I will go ahead and reset that and add the crop back on. And you will see in my preset pack that I have separate steps. So for the first step is the basic preset, then you have the color grading, and then you have the contrast and the grain, and then some black and white presets as well if you want to use those. So let's go ahead and apply my standard preset. I typically like to adjust the amount slider to about 70, so that way you have a stylized look without it being too stylized. Sometimes I will stick with 100, sometimes I don't. It really just depends on the lighting and the photo itself. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and skip two and we're gonna go to the contrast options. My contrasty is typically where I like to start with as a base. And you will notice in the tone curve that I drop my highlights quite a lot and then I lift my shadows a lot without having the blacks have too much of that faded look. Now from there, you can make any adjustments that you prefer, but personally, I prefer to adjust the contrast over here in the tone curve. I don't really use the contrast slider all that much. If anything, I might drop it to 15 and then just go from there. Just be careful that you don't go too far because when you start to drag up the blacks, you start to get that super faded look that was super popular on Instagram back in like 2016. You do not want your photos to look like you just applied an Instagram filter before you posted it. As of a recent Lightroom update, you can now adjust your saturation directly in the tone curve, which is nice because as you add more contrast to your image, the more saturated it will be as well. It's up to your personal preference on what you do, but if I'm adding more contrast to an image, I will probably be removing some of that added saturation. The difference may seem pretty small, but remember when you are editing a photo in Lightroom, it's the small little adjustments that really add up and give you that final result. Now, a lot of people tell me that my editing style looks a lot like Portra 400 or Cinestill 400D. Personally, I don't really think so because my goal is not to replicate any specific film stock. That was never my intention and I don't think it ever necessarily will be. I just want my photos to have a film-like, timeless look. Let's go to the next image and apply my preset. Let's leave it at about 80. Let's apply the flat contrast and you will notice that we maintain some of the detail in the shadows here on this wood. Now before we move away from the tone curve, we're gonna dive into the RGBs because that is really where a lot of your editing will be done. Now you can always go down to the color mixer and adjust the hue of colors. You will see the minor adjustments there, but if you really want to make a difference in your image and make your photo pop and stand out, I would recommend playing with the RGBs when you're doing the S-curve, you really want to find a balance. You can see I'm adding way too much red here, and then you go down, you're adding way too much blue. So you really want to create that S and just find a nice balance between the lower half and the upper half. And then you can copy that channel settings and paste it to the next one and the next one. 
but I personally prefer to go in and do it manually for each one. It allows you to really fine tune and get the colors exactly how you want. You can try and replicate film stocks all day long, and there are some really good presets out there that do a great job, but I think if you are truly going for that film-like look, then you just have to shoot film. That's just the reality of it, and it is the way it is. Also, if you guys have never tried Cucumber Gatorade before, it is incredible. And the last tip I will give you guys if you are really trying to nail in that film look is to use this program called Dehancer. It is a must. I've actually done sponsored stuff for them before in the past, so I will leave a link in the description. You can help support the channel that way as well. But Dehancer is absolutely amazing, and all you need to do is right click it and edit in Dehancer. Let's do that. And this is literally a cheat code if you want your photos to look like film. I would suggest not using my preset if you are going to use one of these film profiles. But let's go ahead and click that off. But you can come over here and adjust a bunch of different things that you cannot in Lightroom, such as the film grain, like if you wanted to add film grain here instead of with my preset pack. But one of my favorite things is adding collation. If you come down here to the global diffusion, you can add some of the red halation on, which is kind of like chromatic aberration, but this actually looks good. And specifically, if you are going for a CineStill 400D type look, then you might wanna just add a whole lot of halation. So go down to the bloom, and that is where you will get that mist filter-like look. And when you are done editing your photo in Dehancer, just hit OK. And when you come back to Lightroom, you can compare the two images, the before and after with Dehancer. Now, what I did is pretty extreme. I would definitely be a little bit more subtle than what I did with this, but I just wanted to give you guys a good example of exactly what you can do. And if you're trying to fool people into thinking you are actually shooting film, you should probably be using Dehancer. Although I would probably recommend not trying to fool people. Now this is one of my favorite tips for editing photos because I like to maintain the blues in the sky, but I like to warm up my images as well. But I don't like when the sky gets overly warm. So I will apply a linear gradient and just drag it up above the whole image, subtract the sky, and warm up the car in the background without adjusting the sky. All right, now going back over to my presets, let's apply one of the moody contrast options, which do kind of have that little more faded drop shadow look, but I use it for a different purpose. I like using the moody and then applying the expired. What it does, it essentially warms up the image just a little bit more, but it also adds some red into the shadows, which with that faded shadow look and the reds, it gives you almost the aesthetic of expired film. And honestly, we could come down here and adjust that even more just a little bit. And the last thing, if you are going for that expired film look, is you probably want to add a lot of grain to the image. Not too overabundantly, but if you go over to the heavy grain option here, it kind of just completes the whole look. Now I can sit here all day and tell you guys how to edit, but I think our brains are naturally hardwired to edit the way we like to edit, whether you end up buying my presets or not. You may try editing and lowering the contrast, but naturally without realizing, you'll always start to gravitate back toward how you think the photo should look in your head. Despite being able to look at someone else's photo, which is lower contrast, yet you don't look at their photo and think, hmm, they should probably add some more contrast. Same goes for natural looking edits rather than more stylized looking edits. As I've mentioned, I personally prefer a more stylized look. And when I try and do a more natural looking edit, I look at the photo and I think it's boring or it's missing something. Yet I don't look at someone else's photo and think it's boring when all they did are some minor slider adjustments. So I hope this video could give you guys a little bit of insight into my editing philosophy. And if you are interested in checking out my Lightroom presets, then the link is in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I will be happy to get back to you. And if you could like the video and subscribe to help support me. And I hope I could inspire you guys to get out and take more photos. Go out and shoot.